world media is they're coming together. Um, they get richer and richer, they get more powerful, and they start affecting not only the conscious, but the subconscious. Um, and you realize that the latest one, the last one, is gonna be really powerful. And this one clearly is. Um, and I think we saw it very early in the emergence of this last wave of VR by a lot of therapeutic uses of VR beginning to emerge, eating, teaching and using for post-traumatic stress syndromes and for other types of addictions as a bridge to get out of one addiction into another state. That it's such a powerful experience that you can really use it to manipulate internally and externally the body functions. Um, I think one of the other ones that most people who are just sort of coming into VR hear about VR sickness and the issues with VR making your body uh, ill. That should be a warning right there. This is a very powerful medium. Uh, this is something that can literally um, make you throw up and fall down. Um, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so I think you're absolutely right that there is something in exploring the history of way that humans have used and interacted with drugs and the way they use and interact with new media. Um, and that, again, the, the sort of dual language learning, there's a lot to be learned in VR from that set of experiences and vice versa. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll pick that. Okay. Um, so I, I think with trips or you know voyages or journeys or whatever of all kinds, uh, oftentimes what's actually most meaningful is what it stays with you once you've come back. And so I'm very excited about about that effect in VR. And I've been, I'm going to say that this counts for literature, for, for cinema, et cetera. And we had a really great conversation about this yesterday where um, I come from a background of having fallen in love with, with photography. And there's this experience when you are start to use a camera and you start to see the world differently. You start to see the, the world photographically. Um, and I've had that experience, you know, sort of using depth to sort of see the world sculpturally in this funny way. Um, and so, that is kind of my hope for this stuff, is that you, and I don't, like I'm not necessarily going to go on record saying what exactly that is, but I'm excited for the kinds of experiences that we can make using this, and the effects that those might have once you've sort of taken it off again. Yeah, I mean, um, even to talk about, I was a brain man for four years. I'm glad that you <laughs> both guys go. Uh, so I've seen, I've seen some stuff, and I've seen people on some things, and I think uh, when we showed the world tour film that I did uh, at Google I.O. this past um, people were obviously very skeptical. I mean, we even did like a VR experience of people looking at the camera for the first time, and they just are like taking photos and like skeptically walking away. But they actually stayed some of them for, to watch the stuff, and they um, they went in just like kind of grumpy, and they put it on, and then all of a sudden they were like looking, like spinning and looking and trying to pet the horse, and then they take it off, <laughs> and they're like, "You're there." And I've, I've never experienced that as a filmmaker in my entire life. Usually, it's a dark room; you don't know if people are responding to things. You kind of leave because you don't even know, and like they. And you're just watching them interact and smile, and you kind of can follow them and see what they're doing. And then they finally, they're not usually facing you by the end of it. And so they, they turn around and they catch your eyes, and it's the first time that you're seeing something back in the real world. And there's a look on their face they can only be described as like my experiences, like seeing people that were that euphoric on drugs. Um, or just having had a really good experience generally. I mean, it was that look of like, <laughs> and I, all I remember saying was welcome back. And and it really, I, I think at that point, both of, I was just extremely moved. And like you almost, there was that moment where you almost think you're gonna cry and you're like, I gotta give this to the next person, like we gotta keep going. But that connection after something like that is extremely profound. I think anything that gives you that kind of feeling, go, I mean, why suppress that, you know? Um, I saw an interesting article that was written by a feminist author, uh, Ruby Wax, who went to Burning Man for the first time. And she started her article by saying, the only way I can describe this is watching a Fellini film on acid. <laughs> I, I just want to do a very, very brief uh, story. Uh, Jaron Lanier and I got together a couple months ago, and he coined the phrase virtual reality. And I asked him, do you regret it? And he said, no. And then I said, you know, some people are using, like, my VR is better than your VR. And I'm doing VR and you're not doing VR. And he couldn't stop laughing. He, it, it was like unimaginable to him that people were doing that. And he went on to say that he wanted a phrase that was unapproachable. It's, it's, an, um, it's not like a book, you know, or a computer. And um, so I, I think it just partly goes with the baggage of those two words. Um, no, okay, question. 